but that's okay. We got the best here with us. <laughs> We're going to step through. This is the training for cooperating teachers. We have a student teacher from MTSU. Uh, these are the pertinent details that you need to know. Now, when you have your own university supervisor, they may do one or two things differently, but this is the basic things that all of them will have to do. And Mr. Michael Robertson, who's going to be facilitating this training for us, has kind of put it out in a one, two, three, step-by-step -step basis so you can follow along. And then we're going to take this so if others are having student teachers for the very first time, because this morning we have Ms. Uh, Miss Vicki Petty from Central Middle, she has been with us and she's been trained on the Renaissance work sample and a lot of the other cooperating teachers have been trained on that so we're trying to, the new ones coming in now, we want to get them trained and this is for the secondary cooperating teachers. We'll have another training for the elementary and special ed cooperating teachers. Now you're, you're all. But yes, but art is, a, a, in, in our college, it's a secondary minor. And so they will be trained for the secondary minor. So don't panic, you're in practice. <laughs> and so uh, we're just thankful you're all here today. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that if you wanted the little tickets for the tailgating today, we have those and we have tickets to the ball game. If you want to stay and go to the ball game with us today. And that starts around 12 o'clock and the ball game will start at 2.30. So those are still available to you if you want to stay. Uh, we need for you to work on the W-9, get that filled out, and pass it down to Miss Stephanie so we can get those processed for you. And we're going to ask Mr. Michael Robinson, who is one of our secondary cooperating um, university supervisors. Um, thank you, Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Tammy. On behalf of our Dean, Dean Bonner, and our department chairperson, Dr. Jim Huffman, and Dr. Brown, we want to welcome you this morning to our first, we hope, of many uh, seminars for cooperating teachers. Uh, our second placement began Wednesday. We hope that all of our student teachers, our secondary people, showed up to your places mm -hmm. and are not running away yet, but uh, they, if they were in the middle school, the first placement, of course they're at the high school now and vice versa. Uh, what our intent today will be is to acclimate you to the process, what we're trying to do in the department uh, in the secondary education is to get a baseline of consistency among evaluations. Uh, instead of just sending a packet and hope you understand, uh, we, we hope to, after today's session that you'll have uh, a basic knowledge of what do I need to do when a student teacher shows up to my room. And for those uh, uh, cooperating teachers that did not get to attend today, and if we have some in your buildings, I know. If I could get you to be the kind of liaison for them. Uh, all of my student teachers were to have brought their uh, cooperating teachers this very same packet when they showed up on Wednesday. And hopefully what happens is when your supervisor makes his or her initial visit, they will explain in detail all of these forms. But if you look, we're going to follow the order of progression this morning. The contents of your packet, of course, the nice letter from Dr. Brown welcoming you as a cooperating teacher and thanking you for allowing us to be guests in your school or schools. And then, the W-9 forms, which, of course, today, you know, you get your half million for coming to this session, <laughs> and then when you fill out your W-9 form, you'll get your second million, half million, at the end of the second placement, about, which, you know, serves as Christmas money, doesn't it? 
about December the second week, maybe. But if you'll do that and leave those with Miss Stephanie this morning, we'll ensure that you get your uh, full million for attending today and the uh, session, having our student teachers as your guest. Now, the next form you'll see has my name on it. And it's just a s summary of uh, what we expect uh, while the student teacher is practicing in your room. Uh, of course, I've given you my numbers. And Barbara, you're mine. We worked together before. So what you might want to do if you have other supervisors is to just change my information to their information. Uh, what I've asked all of my student teachers to do, and we've already accomplished that through email and by telephone, is during that first day which they showed up to your schools on Wednesday, they were always to email me with their teacher's planning time. That way, that initial visit, uh, I can schedule pretty quickly, come to the schools and meet with the cooperating teacher and go over this entire packet and answer questions that, that you might have. Uh, listed on the first page of my yellow sheet here, you'll find uh, what, I, what I ask cooperating teachers to do. I asked them to read through the student teaching handbook. Now, do all of them read through this? No. This, is, this book contains a lot of information. Now, what we'll do before we leave today, I have, this is the old teacher in me, I have developed a summary sheet of the student handbook, the most important points that I will give to you to stick in there. But, this is kind of the student teacher's Bible. And if you ever have a question and you can't get a hold of me right quick, you probably can find the answer or answers in this student teaching uh, handbook. I always refer back to it when a student teacher calls me, Mr. R, I don't understand what you mean by, by a lesson plan. Well, then, Honey, what we need to do is I'm going to direct you to page 33. And if you remember, this is what we talked about during our seminar. Were you asleep that day, hon? You know, and this is just one that's recommended in the, the handbook. Now, you do what you want them to do. They have been through umpteen forms of how to write a lesson plan. This is just a recommended lesson plan on page 33 that covers all of the components that NK requires for college students, okay? But you work with them. Now what I do, and this is me, the first placement of each semester, I require them to follow in, in secondary education, their YOED lesson plan that they have written their unit from. That's what we use. And each time that you evaluate them formally, now by formally, what do I mean, folks? They know that today is the day she's going to evaluate me, right? <clears throat> they are to hand you a formal lesson plan to go with that lesson. Uh, while you're scoring them, you can check off, yes, their immediate objectives were there, their state standard was there, their uh, means for assessment. Uh, and this one, folks, they always leave out and they still do. After umpteen, please remember to put your plans for your diverse populations. Well, here's, here's a key statement. But Mr. R, I don't have any. All of mine are honors. I said, then you have 25 diverse students <laughs> if you have honors classes. 
please, there's not a principal in this state that wouldn't score you high on your lesson plan if you put accommodations for student learners. I have all honors classes, and today we're going to write a computer program, yada, yada, yada. That will cover it. Or let's go to the South Pole. Let's say that I have a middle school student teacher who has 25 students. And of those 25, 15 have IEPs. And that's not covered in the lesson plan. What's the principal going to do when they're out there making the big money if they don't cover that on their lesson plan? What are NCLB folks going to do? Mark them down, okay? So those are the types of things that we're going to talk about. Now, my second placement, here's what I do, practical. All 11 of my secondary folks this past placement have done their lesson plans by the YoWed model. This time, guess what I'm doing? in practicality. We're going by the state model. We had our seminar last Wednesday, or no, last Tuesday. I gave them a briefing on their self-assessment. Remember that, guys, girls? Give me three of your strengths from your first placement, three of your weaknesses from the first placement. Then we're going to build on those then remember the PIR, who remembers what that stands for in state model? Test time. Planning information record. What does that substitute for? A lesson plan. It substitutes for a lesson plan. So they have been briefed on the new state model, and then I gave them one other form, Barbara. Kristen should have all of that, all of those materials that she's going to, I gave her enough, three for you, mm -hmm. two for me. Okay. <clears throat> the reflective information record. After they teach, we try to instill, yeah, you're going to mess up, aren't you? Mm -hmm. you're, they're, they're so afraid of messing up. I'm thinking, welcome to the world. Welcome to public education. You know, there's not a time that I cannot remember not messing up. You just go on and you put that in your gray matter and say, I'll reflect on that. And if you mess up first period, what happens to second period? It's better because you learn from first period mistakes. And by sixth period, and some of our student teachers ladies and gentlemen, dread their sixth period. I said, sixth period should be your stage because you've learned from your mistakes all throughout the day. That should be your best period. Mm -hmm. But of course, they disagree with me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a national problem. In sixth period during the day, right before fall break <laughs> or spring break, lots of extra problems involved. Now, <clears throat> look at number two on the yellow sheet. <clears throat> In the handbook, it'll tell you that they should observe for a week, nada, no, 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 not second time. In fact, they've already been with you two and a half days. I would say Monday, they should be picking up your lessons, part of your lessons, calling the row, getting acclimated with names. Uh, actually, the first two and a half days with my folks, I have asked them to do two other out-of-class observations. Now, what is an out-of-class observation? Barbara, you've had student teachers with me. What is an out-of-class observation? She needs to go and observe other classes. And we want you as a cooperating teacher to give them your recommendations on who you want them to see. Mm -hmm. We want them to be folks that are very capable in their academic area, very capable in management areas, personalities, kind but firm personalities, 
you know, they, my high school people, when we left them on Wednesday or Tuesday, I said, if you've been in high school, you've had heaven. Now you're going to front line in Iraq if you're going to the middle school. <coughs> and your middle, my middle school folks, you've been in Iraq for seven and a half weeks, you're coming home if you're going to the high school. And that's basically my analogy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. Spending half my life in middle school. Yes. Uh, she's already realized that. <laughs> uh, and suggestions for a sequential plan are on page uh, 12 of your green handbook. Number three, we've already talked about the lesson plans. They know that they are to hand you that formal lesson plan. So don't let them play you against me or their supervisor. Uh, they'll try. Certainly try. They're still college students. Okay? Number four, it's beneficial for you to provide written feedback on a daily basis. If you can't do that, at least just a few minutes before they leave your class and go home, just... Uh, for instance, Kristen, here is what I suggest I saw today. If you'll improve on this, I think you've got it, but just tweak this a little bit mm -hmm. and you'll be better. Uh, number five, we talked about the out-of-class observations. Of course, two at the beginning of the placement and two at the concluding week of the placement for a total of four, which they will upload into the TK20 system, which we'll talk about at the end of this session. Uh, number six, what I do and what the handbook suggests that supervisors do, and again, folks, I want you to be a liaison for me for others that may come to you and say, well, what in the heck are you supposed to do? How many times am I supposed to evaluate this student teacher? I evaluate all of my first placement folks three times. Actually, I make five visits. The first one to bring you materials, to get to know you. Then the next three are actual formal evaluations, not unannounced. I don't play that game. Uh, I showed up at Coffee County High School one day. I had a student teacher over there, and I'd been to Rutherford County, and I thought, well, I haven't talked to her in a few days, I think I'll just drop in. Well, I nearly gave her a heart attack and the cooperating teacher a heart attack in English 4. Mm. <laughs> and I, I waved my hands and I said, look, and they were whispering. I said, I'm not evaluating. I'm just here. Do you need anything? I'll leave, mm -hmm. you know, so I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And then that mm -hmm. fifth visit, the first placement, is a wrap-up visit. No evaluations, just collect paperwork, sign off, pass or fail, number of days absence, uh, and, and go. And I say congratulations. You have three more days at Riverdale. Enjoy them. You'll cry a lot probably on Friday because, yes, they will be affectionate and say they, they want you to stay and, and are sorry you're leaving. But now the second placement is a whole different ball of wax. Now let's back up. First placement, I said three visits unless... Unless, what? There's a problem. And in my tenure, I've been doing this four years, and if there's a problem, they're going to see me every day. And just get over it. Now, it is very crucial as their cooperating teacher and mentor that if you spot a problem, ladies and gentlemen, let us know immediately. We don't like to hear it fifth and sixth hand. You know, well, I didn't know there was a problem. Well, the principal knows it. The two teachers beside me know it. The secretary knows it. But the supervisor doesn't have a clue, thinks everything's rosy. So if you would do that for me, if you spot that first problem, you get on that phone and call your, your supervisor, whoever it is. Me, I keep this phone with, with 11 student teachers. I'm somewhere every day. But if you'll leave that message, when I get back in the car, I check it. If there's a problem, here I come. 
And I have all, all it, in times past, I have canceled evaluations to take care of a, a problem at Laverne High School. And that's called flexibility still as a classroom teacher. So the second time, this second placement, all of mine, I'll have to say, were wonderful. God is good. <laughs> this time, no problems. I didn't have to go after any of them. Didn't have to go uh, more than my allotted times. It's just great. There are times, and that's kind of like a school year, isn't it, in public school? Sometimes you have those years where you don't, you have six periods that are heaven sent, but then you have those other years, right? <laughs> I had a student teacher last time tell me, is it wrong not to like a six period? <laughs> I said, well, tell me about it. Why do you not like the six period? Because they're hellions. <laughs> I said, welcome to public education. I said, be thankful you don't have all six periods like that. Because in my tenure of 32 years, I had some classes like that that I thought, hey, they're trying to get rid of me. But you do what you have to do. If you like to eat and you like to stay in the profession, you go, I remember practicing in front of a mirror trying to be aggressive giving them that look, body language. And you know, it helps to have the football coaches on your side too, doesn't it? <laughs> I always tell my folks, you use any resources that you can get. And those football coaches helped me out when I taught ninth grade. That Without tenure, that second year I taught. And I tell you, we got those guys straightened up. And most of them passed my class because they didn't like to, to do 50 extra wind sprints. <laughs> All right. So this time, I'm going to only visit twice. Unless Barbara Wolf calls me and says, Hey, Mike, got a little problem. She's not following directions. I think you probably need to come more. Got you, Barbara. And I work at your discretion. I'll be there. But please, don't think you don't pull out those stops because this is their last chance before they're going to be the real teacher. Whatever you can provide as far as recommendations to these guys and girls. Now they're, they're coming in thinking they know it all since they passed first placement. They always do that because I sense it when I try to tell them, now look, you really have to work on your English grammar. You cannot say ain't just because you're a social studies person. I never will forget Barbara. Central Middle School, not going to say who. <laughs> My little guy was doing so good. He had wellness and PE. Had uh, talked to him about his dress. He came in with a nice uh, yellow shirt and coordinating tie. Two things happened during that final evaluation. I had given him wonderful marks. I think he has finally got it. He's listening to me. He gave them an assignment to do at their seat. Little guy raised their hand. Mr. So-and-so, how do you spell generic? He said, you know what he said? Almost died of a stroke, being an ex-English person. It, Oh, just put it how, you, how it sounds. It doesn't matter how you spell it. At the very same time, he put his foot up. He had on nice dress shoes, kind of like these, and no socks. <laughs> Stroke. <laughs> and at his post-conference, we addressed those. Okay, what about those socks? Oh, I didn't even recognize it. I had, didn't have any socks on. I said, well, they did. <laughs> your students, your eighth graders did, because they're laughing at you. Well, guess what I did to accommodate him? He, did, he didn't have any money. He was poor, didn't have any money. He's lived in the dorm here. I said, no problem. I'll bring you a pair of navy and a pair of black that'll get you through this place. I said, but what about this English problem? I said, do you realize what these eighth graders are, 
are going to do when they leave your class, especially if they have English next period, you have made an enemy with your English teacher. <laughs> And don't be surprised if she didn't come in here and clip your ears off. <laughs> I said, you, how could you have handled that differently? Mr. McGillicuddy, how do I spell generic? Let's go to the dictionary and let's go to the G-E's. Gen, G-E-N. That would have covered it. But just saying, doesn't matter. We're social studies. English doesn't count. English counts in everything. Spelling counts in a math class, doesn't it? We, we get what we preach, what we expect. Okay. So this time at Riverdale, Barbara, if we go over your paperwork today, then I'll see you only three times. Two evaluations and close out. But normally, unless there's a problem, the supervisor will visit four times during the second placement, get acquainted, bring paperwork, two evaluations, and final wrap-up. Space throughout. Uh, number seven, my goal is to meet with you briefly, uh, and we know from secondary, when I visit with 11, sometimes it's when the bell rings, I catch the cooperating teacher. If she's doing okay, would you just please sign across the top. Ms. McGillicuddy is progressing here at Riverdale uh, and just sign and date for documentation. And if you need, if you need me to come back during planning time, if there's a severe problem, let me know. But I'm on my way to Siegel. And that's worked out for me. And at the same time, when you do the evaluations, your formal evaluations, you go over it with them before they leave that day and turn on the side and just say, I have reviewed my formal evaluation date with Ms. Wolf, have her sign date, and there's your documentation that she has had a conference with you. Okay. Uh, number eight, those dates, does it say September? Yes, and then Okay. Uh, well, I've got it, didn't I? I gave, I, I gave a generic here. Yes, their midterm of their second placement week is actually the week of November the 12th to the 16th. What I like to do as a supervisor, if you can have at least one formal evaluation completed by that time, I can contact Tammy and Dr. Huffman. All of my folks are doing satisfactorily in their schools. Uh, at this point. At the same time, if you have one of those knotheads who decides, hey, I don't even like kids. I've decided I don't like kids. We need to really get to the bottom of that before we get into the placement so we can meet with that person and, and decide, hey, maybe you need to think about doing something else other than teaching, because this, you have to like kids to succeed in this. Uh, now, do, am I saying that you can only do three observations, formal observations? No, you do one, I had one before, Barbara, that wanted to do one every day. I said, go for it. You are very welcome to copy the formal evaluation paperwork and do as many as you like if you think you need to and if you have that time, then absolutely. But I'm just requiring three. And sometimes I've had only two because they couldn't get a third one in because of things like homecoming week, prom in the spring, all those kind of things that I'm telling my student teachers, they, they worry. I don't know if I can do this. Remember what I say to them? I bring out the rubber band. Flexible as a rubber band. You're not going to change these things. Welcome to public high school. OK? Number nine, this one they'll try you on. 
remember that with the exception of the final three days of the placement, when the student teacher is observing other teachers which you have recommended, they are to be with you the entire seven and a half weeks, assisting you in whatever areas you have appro deemed appropriate, including early late assignments and or bus duties. They know that, but sometimes they'll say, oh, I can't do that. No, no, no. They can't do it alone. They have to have a certified person with them, but oh yes, whatever you go through in your schools, PTO meetings, Saturday uh, pancake breakfast fundraisers, ball game, if you are scheduled to take up tickets, and by the way, Riverdale won again last night. Oh, did they, they did, did they blew it. them away. Wow. So that they're still so undefeated. Uh, looking to go to probably the playoffs, that means extra duties mm -hmm. as a teacher, taking up tickets at the ball game. They have to do what you do. And if they start whining, say, do I need to call Mike? <laughs> uh, no, I think I can handle that. Because <laughs> they know the answer I'm going to give them. Uh, However, for, we ask for, for legal purposes to never leave a student teacher alone in any of these duties. They are to be with you. During their final week, when not observing other classes, they are to be assisting you. And that means, yes, their teaching is over, but that doesn't mean that they can't put grades in your grade book, walk around and help when, you're, when you have taken the class back over. So don't let them think my teaching ends today so I can go out to Hardy's at lunch and bring my friends and wear shorts. No, they are with you until that final bell on Friday or whenever it is of their final placement. Uh, now, if you don't need them those last three days, they have permission to work on their portfolios, finalize their grades for you. They are never, underline never, to leave you holding the bag. I had a student teacher last spring at Cannon County. Left and had not entered any of the grades in the teacher's grade book. I just had a sense, I called the cooperating, how is she leaving today? Well, this is kind of minor, the cooperating teacher said, but she left here today and she hasn't entered any of her grades. I said, minor? <laughs> minor? In the spring semester, with school getting out soon, that's major. She's not going to her second placement. I'll give her a phone call. She'll be back over there Monday. And guess what? She cried a couple of tears, and I said, honey, you just don't do that to a cooperating teacher. You are responsible for your stuff. Get that stuff in the grade. When did you think that the cooperating teacher had time to enter your grades? Welcome to public ed. <laughs> and remember, yes, there'll be times you'll be out, and yes, they'll be teaching your class, but... There'll be a substitute back in that room. And here's what I suggest to my, my student teachers. Utilize that substitute teacher. Don't let her sit back there and read a novel. Mm -hmm. She's getting paid. You're teaching. You say, now here's what I want you to do for me today. Mm -hmm. Go run this off. Help me when I have groups. You take this poetry section. Use her. Make her earn that money you're not getting. <laughs> Absolutely. Now that that's something I've I've seen, and it really, I know I'm a guest in that school, but sometimes I have had to really bite my tongue to sit back there with a substitute while I'm observing, and she's reading Elvis Presley novels. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, oh my, I'm gonna be nice. I'll bite. 
At the same time, though, sometimes um, substitute teachers don't always know what their place is, and it's right. up to the cooperating teacher in her plans. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. to, to accommodate that right. with the student teacher, because right. student teacher will just take over, and that's that's right. not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But she, with the 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 degree of non-experience that she has, does not know how to utilize that extra right. person. Right. So th that's great. Yes. If we have a professional experience that we would like our student teachers to accompany us to, is that acceptable? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about that for a second. Does that mean an overnight stay? No, Does no, it no, mean after school, uh, in it's, service? It's a two-day, it's this next week. Okay. And I'm one of the presenters for the experience, so I kind of wanted them to come along with me to Absolutely. see the other roles of a teacher and also Absolutely. to interact with a large group of art professionals. Absolutely. And you know what? To kill a, two birds with one stone, you might allow her or him to use that as one of their out-of-class observations. Okay. Practical knowledge. This is what the real life is. Now, what we don't want them to do is to put themselves in a position where they're away from school and the liability and the temptation factor is there. We, we discourage that. Right, Tammy? Now, here's one more point on number nine that I didn't put in there. <clears throat> they are to teach minimum. Underline minimum, circle it, highlight it, whatever, because when they hear that from me, some of mine have used that against me and the cooperating teacher. Oh, <clears throat> Miss Wolf, he said during our seminar that we just have to teach two weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not say that. You, cons you twisted that. I said you must teach a minimum of two weeks to get your student teaching credit. But most of you will teach a whole lot more than that. So don't let them use that on. Mm -hmm. Again, if they do, and they're, they're mine, okay, I think I need to call him. Because they know they're the white lies. Okay. But again, they're just big elementary students in senior clothes. Okay. The last day for their placement will be Friday, December the 7th. No, let me take that back. The last day they teach. They'll turn everything over to you at 3 o'clock on December the 7th. That will leave them Monday, Tuesday, to get everything back online, get grades in the grade book, and then their last day at Riverdale or wherever they are, the second placement, is Wednesday, December the 12th. They graduate on 15th. So they'll be anxiously uh, looking forward to that weekend. Graduation is the 15th? 15th. And I have told mine, the first placement, they didn't believe in fly by. Mm -hmm. And I told mine last week, when I, or last Tuesday, when they left here, you think the first placement flew by, there's Christmas trees up at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> People are buying ornaments. Well, and because of first placement also with Labor Day and Fall Break, they only had really six <coughs> weeks, 29 days. That's right. And with all your interruptions, that really made it hard to get everything in. It sure did. Mm -hmm. And then finally, thank you for allowing both m the student teacher and myself into your classrooms as your guest. And I always try to stress that to them. Honey, or sir, you are the guest in that classroom. You are learning. You have no business telling Miss Wolf how to assess. You need to be listening how to assess. And then, when you are the real teacher, you will know You'll look back, it's kind of like a child and their parent. Yeah, what Miss Wolf said did does make sense now. Really? She's the experienced person. Okay? Any questions on the synopsis, my yellow sheet?
Did I cover about everything you needed on that? Now, what I'd like for you to do, if you would move that wonderful TK20 sheet out of that right-hand side <clears throat> and put it in the back on the left-hand side because it goes with evaluation. It looks just like this. Move that, please, to the back on the left-hand side behind your evaluation paperwork. The next part is how do I evaluate the student teacher? Well, I came up, this is the old teacher in me, guidelines for completing secondary student-teacher evaluations. Again, I don't care how many you do. You can do two of that, like football drills, if you want to. If you've got that much time and want to, fine. All I'm asking as a supervisor, and I think, Tammy, we can be okay to say this, that most supervisors only require two, unless there's a problem, in the second placement. Uh, and of course the first one if you could get it done if you can't don't panic we work around this but their mid uh, term of their second placement is considered the week of November the 12th through the 16th now <clears throat> if you will go to sample A here is the official formal evaluation document. No matter what you see from some supervisors, this is the form that student teachers buy in their packets and I've never understood why are you using something else that they didn't buy. If I buy something and I have to turn it over to my supervisors, by cracky I expect him to be using it. Okay? Now, how many domains are we evaluating the student teacher? Five. Five. Now, look at some of these. Do you have to put a score on every bullet, every component, every time? No, sometimes it will be not applicable. And you know what? I've had student teachers ask me this question. Today, I'm giving a review and a test. You don't want to see that, do you? And as an old principal and teacher, I say, absolutely, I want to see that. Now, well, I don't know how to write a lesson plan for that. Hello? Yes, we can. See, what they're trying to do is get out of a lesson plan. Mm -hmm. No. When I come in, you put me in the back. Don't let, allow them to put me in the front because what happens to students? I've been, is he your husband? Is he your boyfriend? No, he's my supervisor. What does that mean? So, just quietly put me away in the back. I don't need much room. Uh, at, at Laverne High School, Miss... Uh, Rushing gave me a little corner with a shelf on, uh, that I was able to write on because she had 35 high school seniors in Spanish 3 or 2. I said, that's all the room I need just so I can see everybody. Uh, <clears throat> there'll be sometimes you will put in A. Now, here's the form before that student teacher leaves your classroom that day and you have evaluated her or him. You go over these. For instance, what do you think the, during the first placement the, the category where we have to mark low, what do you think it is? Classroom yeah. management. Why do you think that, Barbara? 
because she doesn't know how to do it yet. You don't know, know how to do it till you do it. Look at them. They're what? So close mm -hmm. to the age characteristics of those students mm -hmm. in those high schools yeah. that they, they sometimes when they're in the seminars here and we're looking out in that audience and we see the guys with the caps turned on backwards and the, mm -hmm. uh, the midriffs and, and, I'm, and I'm sitting back there and I'm punching my supervisor friend and saying, oh my goodness, tomorrow <laughs> is the first day of the rest of their life. They don't know what's coming. <laughs> and that's where the socks came in. Didn't own any dress socks because he was still a college student in his head. As long as I got the dress shoes on, I, don't ha I can show skin. What happens in middle school when you walk in as a teacher to those m mongrels, some of them? If you get a haircut differently, they notice. Mm -hmm. I had one one time. Uh, it was one of those mornings with, oh my gosh, it's raining outside. I went to the bedroom, got socks, put them on, got to school. I had a student. Did you know, Mr. R, that you have on a black sock and a blue sock? No, thank you. But see, that's the detail. They are watching everything about you. It's scary, isn't it? Isn't it? But they do with their fingers, too. Yes. They do with yes. It doesn't matter how old they are. They do it. Anything you have differently. If you have a new pair of shoes, they notice. If you. If you have a haircut, they notice. If you have a cut from your shaving, they'll notice. Okay, so that's why we teach, teach our student teachers it is a 24-7 occupation. Okay? All right, let's say, and some of them, this kills me. It, it just bothers me. This is the old teacher in me. Student teachers who come in and like do bell work. And they'll, kids are everywhere, they're sharpening pencils, and the student teacher is, now today we're going to talk about pronouns, and a pronoun is, and, and I'm saying, I have a headache. I'm thinking, and one time, or not one time, more than once, I, at post-conference, honey, your lesson was wonderful. I, le I learned a lot. I was the only one. <laughs> Because what do you mean letting people up on the floor? These are high school kids throwing paper away every five minutes. They don't do that with their cooperating teacher. They're trying you and they've got you. So if you see that they have not clearly established, look, guys, I am your pre-service. I don't like the word soup or uh, student teacher. I like for them to say, I am your pre-service teacher. I have the same expectations as Barbara Wolf. Uh, and if they put those right up front and enforce them, there's very little room for problems. But if you see that that is a problem, you put an asterisk by that bullet, that means, that's a symbol to my student teacher and to all student teachers that you want to see improvement on the second go around. If not, put two asterisks beside it because they know I'm going to see it. And don't be afraid. Some, I've just been entering data from my first placements. You know, the TK-20 system didn't come up till last week. So I'm entering my cooperating teacher data for them so they don't have to go back and redo. I noticed last night there's a lot of fours on everything. And that's okay, I guess. But see, mine didn't match that. And I was there only three times. There's no way I could have given one last night all fours on classroom management. It wasn't so. It wasn't so. Especially first placement. That's unrealistic. 
What's going to happen to that child when they go in that classroom? Maybe in January after Christmas when she takes the place of a lady who's gone out on a maternity leave that has six of those Hellion classes where she's gotten fours on classroom management. Well, and I, I just have to tell her, when I did my final at Summative, I don't see it that way. Here's what I suggest. You don't need to teach anything until you have everyone's eyes. Mm -hmm. That's just how I was. That's how I can laugh about 32 years in public education. Mm -hmm. I have no battle scars. Mm -hmm. I never was kicked. I never was spat upon. Mm -hmm. Now, I did, did chase a school bus one time when somebody called me a bad name and didn't <laughs> think I could run. I ran after the school bus. The bus driver was not happy because I made him late. I said, give me that student off that bus, please. What did you mean by this finger, this one, and this one down? <laughs> oh, I said, bring your parents in the morning to the office and we'll talk about it. Expectations. Mm -hmm. Expectations. You can survive and live to tell about it 35 or 40 years. It's up to you. <laughs> okay? You're not there to be their friend or their cohort. They have plenty of those. You're their teacher. We, and that is so difficult with some of my young men. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell when I'm talking to them in my seminars, oh, yeah, he's too old. He's been in it. You know, I'm thinking, okay, you'll be the one that I'll have to come see. And usually it happens. And it's right now. But you see what I want? And you might put asterisks on several things. What about communication? What's the problem that we see in communication with young pre-service teachers? They assume and they don't fully explain themselves. They don't, they throw out a question and there's no wait time. Mm -hmm. How many times have I said, you asked four questions and never gave the students the time and they were frustrated and they quit. They're not going to, they, they found you out. Also what, Barbara? They're what? So, uh, what? They're what? Their language, oh, oh, their gosh. grammar. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's atrocious. Oh, that's absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And they, they get so angry at me when I go on TK20 and, I, and here's something. I say, I'm an English person. I don't apologize for that. You are not going to upload into TK20 who goes to Dean Bonner, Dr. Huffman, and, and Dr. McPhee may read it in the Incate Commission next month with me being your supervisor and you have misspelled, I called the role R-O-L-E. It was 11 out of 11. I think we still call those what? Synonyms? <laughs> Homonyms. Homonyms. Homophones. Yeah. Uh, see, we don't see those. The, I don't see the portfolios where they write all those things in. I can bring see, you and one. I haven't seen, I don't know about the TK20, so. Painless. Okay. That's, 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 the, that's why we're saving it to last. Yeah. Oh, it's painless. Yeah. It's painless. Yeah. Painless. Yeah. painless. Okay. Now that it's up, mm -hmm. it was a booger bear all the first placement because it never came up. Mm -hmm. And student teachers couldn't upload. Mm -hmm. I couldn't upload because right. there's nothing there for me to upload. No, no template. But it's there now. Okay. And I'm doing two a night mm -hmm. <laughs> to get caught up to my second place. But everybody understand this? Mm -hmm. Instruction. Here's another area. I call it the objective sandwich. Mm -hmm. Please make your objective sandwich. And by that I mean before you teach. And I had one little lady at Siegel who did a wonderful job. Today, here are my objectives. Lucy, read number one. Number two, Ben, number three. <clears throat> teach, teach, teach. That's the bread. Teach, teach, teach. That's the meat. Mm -hmm. And pacing. Mm -hmm. Do they have trouble pacing? Mm -hmm. Having enough time left over or way too much time left over? Do you want a student teacher or a pre-service teacher to say, for the last 30 minutes, read your assignment for tomorrow? Oh, my Lordy. Die of a heart attack again. They are not going to do it. 
They will use that time for what? Socialization. I have had them say that, and I cringe, and I just put my head down and go, okay, you've asked for it. Mm -hmm. And here, right in front of me, you got a date for tomorrow night? Da -da 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 -da. What movie did you see last night? Da -da -da -da. I'm thinking. I, way, I hear way too much stuff that I don't need to hear from students. <laughs> How could they have avoided that? Pacey, mm -hmm. take your lesson all the way to bell time. Mm -hmm. And they say, that's, Mike, that's hard to do. Yes, it is, but what can you do? Plan it out. It's better to have way too much than not enough. Mm -hmm. And then, if you've got just a couple minutes left, I've had them get up and stand at the door. I said, why would you do that? What, what does the principal say about them lined up at the door, hanging out the door? Restate your objectives. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, what did we learn today? There's not a principal in the world that wouldn't go for that, would he? If he stood outside your door and I say, what if he, the first three or four people that come out of your room, he asks, what did you learn in there today? Well, the first two or three are probably going to say what? Nothing. <laughs> you probably need the middle part of that. Or the, especially the last ones that hang around that really get into the learning. But you see my objective sandwich up front, teach, and the last piece of bread, restate. All righty. And now you have an example of that. Your supervisor will bring you the official documents for you to use. This is your folder for you to keep forever. You duplicate it for folks that didn't come today, or we have plenty, don't we, that we can give them? All right, let's pretend we've done three of these. Behind them, they're going to put a what? your pre-service teacher, their lesson plan. When you conference with them, now that space right there sometimes is way not enough. What you can do, and what I suggest, add paper, staple it together. I had a Lincoln County lady just finish. She added two and three pages, but it was all good comments. She said, I don't have enough room to tell how good this lady is. I said, then put another sheet. Not only one, two, three, four. Now the problem, where do I draw the line in putting TK20 on that? <laughs> it's called summarize. Okay. Go over it with them before they leave. Turn it to the side. Get them to sign. And I, I just put uh, Kristen continues to experience success here at Riverdale okay. under my leadership and then get her to sign it and date it. You have your documentation. Then all you do, tear off the yellow copy, present it to them. That goes in their portfolio under Section 5. Now, let's say that it is already December and all of you have been Christmas shopping, got everything hidden on the beds for presents and it's time for the student teacher to leave. That final week, or even before that time, let's look at sample B, which is a four-page gray document. It's the summative. Of course, what are the student teachers looking at most importantly on this sheet? Pass or fail. Make sure that's clearly marked and number of days absent. Now, of course, the empathetic, sympathetic persons that we are, teachers, there are times when they're going to be absent and they're going to worry you to death. Do I need to come in? I have a 105 degree fever. No. Don't come in. We don't want you to spread the germs. What you need to do when they call and tell me that is what I, th I say, get yourself to the doctor. Now, what they're supposed to do, and here's something else they'll try to play you. Let's say that, tell me your last name again. Petty. Petty. Miss Petty is has scheduled her student teacher to take over next Wednesday. 
to teach first and second period? Math. She gets a call on Wednesday morning at 5.30. I'm sick. I'm throwing up. That's okay. But what I tell my student teachers, before you left that room on Tuesday, you plan to be sick. Mm -hmm. And you leave enough plans where I don't, and, and, and does Rutherford County have the same problem Tallahoma City used to have getting quality substitutes at certain times of the year? I don't care if they brought a high school graduate who has no post-education in as a substitute. He can pick up those plans and what? Not miss a beat. And that includes what? Don't say run off the materials. Oh, well, so I'm going to leave a class of 35 alone while I go run off the materials? No, you do all of that. Now, that's what I suggest to them. Do they always listen? Nada. And do they always get sick? Absolutely. So here's what their responsibility is. And if they don't do it, you let the supervisor know. Let's say they didn't leave any plans. They are to have delivered those plans. If they're too sick, their husband, their boyfriend, their daddy, their mama, or some responsible person must deliver that to your door so you don't have to scramble to teach. Because what were you, what were you planning on? You were planning for them to teach. So you didn't prepare. They must bring them themselves or deliver them by someone responsible. And if they don't, it all goes into their final evaluation. Responsibility. Do y'all allow them so many days? Do you tell them about... about the, the question yeah. is, do we allow them so many days? For absences, they can have two excused absences where they're sick, or their child is sick. Yeah. After that, you know, they may have to miss, but they are not excused, even if they are sick, and their child or sick or a death in the family, after they miss those two, they have to make those days up at the end of the semester or uh, come back the following semester mm -hmm. and make those. Okay. Now, I know some of you had two teachers Friday, and that was an excused absence. The president of the university had requested that for them. And like that career fair day. Exactly. Yes, they that's excused. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But hair appointments, boyfriend breakups, those are not, that's just part of life. And that's what I try to tell them. I mean, honey, you got to juggle these things. That's just part of public ed. You got to leave them outside. Now, what system? Mitchell, Nashville. Have you had fall break? No. When is fall break for you? Two weeks of Thanksgiving. Okay. Rutherford County, thank the Lord, it's open. Mm -hmm. And all of mine, except for Cannon County, they're on fall break next week. They only get the break that the system has. Mm -hmm. MTSU, some of them tried to always say, well, MTSU has fall break, and I won't not know. Well, I, the people in jail want now, too. <laughs> you get what the system, you go with what the Romans do. Okay? Now, here's what happened in Cannon County, since theirs is next week. I had two that were at Blackman, had already had theirs. I was just going to wait and see. So they both called me. See, I'm trained. <laughs> What do we do? I said, got it figured out. Blackman has already said they would welcome you back for another extra week next week for, to act as an educational assistant for your teacher, your former cooperating teacher. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were wonderful and the cooperating teachers are glad to get them back. Mm -hmm. Now, what would have happened if they'd have been marginal? Mm -hmm. It probably wouldn't have worked out that well. Mm -hmm. But we were able to get them back to Blackman mm -hmm to accommodate that extra week, whereas, but they were professional enough to call me ahead of time. We, I don't think we can do this. Now, guess what? 
I better not say that. Well, we don't know what school. One said, well, the teacher said I could have her key and just come up to the school and plan every day. No, 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 no. That's not learning. That's not, that's not teaching, but trying to accommodate. Okay, now, we're ready to do the summative at the end of the placement. Miss Petty, you've done these before, right? Mm -hmm. Barbara, you've done them before. They're, they haven't changed a bit. This is where you take all of your formal evaluations and condense them into a summary. The only difference is you're giving them a final grade. And remember, four superior, three above average, two average, one below average. And again, if you see these be be below averages on the first time around, put them. Put them. We want you to put them. What we want to see the third and final time or the summative improvement. But telling them they're a four, a th I just don't know if that's good or not. Because sometimes they come in here at mid-semester cocky that they're good. And they are. You know, don't, don't get me wrong, but they're still needing to do what? Learn. They're still eating baby food. They're taking a little bit of steak, but still pablum. The difference here, you have narratives. Number one, you get to say, I think this is what you're strong in. But don't be afraid, since this is it, folks, before they graduate and go out there on their own. Number two, the recommendation, you do not be afraid to say what you think. You still need to make your objective sandwich. You do it sometimes, but you don't do it every time. Your pacing, you still need to work on. And do that for every section. It's just a complete summary of your second placement with the student teacher. And here, I have asked mine, and I'm just going to have to, when I first visit, I'm going to have to get them by the throat, I guess. You're not responding to my emails. Why are you not responding to my emails? I have to schedule 11 folks. I'm waiting to see if you want me to come on my Rutherford County route. That way, I can do them all on one day. Why won't you email me back? There's no excuse. I, yours may be torn up at home, but you're at that school every day. Check your emails. Have one say, I don't like technology. It's here to stay. I don't like dry weather all summer and no rain. It happens. Uh, but my point, if a couple of mine don't improve on this area, they're going to get ones this time. Especially where it says, follow through with assigned task. Why do I need to give them ones if they fail to cooperate with me or get something in when I say it's due, mm -hmm. what does that teach them when they get to Riverdale or Central Middle mm -hmm. as a regular teacher? Do both of you, or, or all three of you, would you say your principal would be satisfied if he's going through a sudden association year and he gave you the prestigious title of coordinator <laughs> and he said this has to be in clean copy by this Friday and you came up and you said oh but I'm a coach and our football team is in the playoffs they'll just have to wait <laughs> it's reality and I've had to tell one already it's priority you got to juggle it all. And I'm glad that you're on the championship football team, but you have to teach history as well. It's very important. Okay? Any questions on this so far? Do you discuss
discuss with your um, student teachers not to be upset if they don't get all four? Oh, yes, okay. and I tell them that. You know, but you know what, Miss Petty, it's just like when you talked. You used to have, I used to have students that, and their parents were like this. Mm -hmm. If they didn't get that A, mm -hmm. if they got an A minus, that was disaster. Mm -hmm. it, it, well, welcome to the real world. Mm -hmm. There's some things you're not going to get A's in. I made a C in chemistry and was so fortunate to get the C, I, I went out and had a party because I passed it with a C because I should have probably failed it. <clears throat> but I'm not going to be a doctor, so I didn't really, wasn't going to teach chemistry, so there was my emphasis. Mm -hmm. uh, now I guess we're ready to go through the booger bear, not so, of TK20. Now, Tammy, are you going to fix the screen for me so we can dial into the program? What you're going to do, you have three tasks at the conclusion of this placement where you will be asked to, to input TK20 information <clears throat> and send it to the university. Now, at the same time, I'm so glad that we required our student teachers this time to keep a hard copy because the system didn't come up. And then we had an announcement last week that they wanted the portfolios turned in last Tuesday. And I'm thinking, thank you, Lord, that I had mine keep the hard copies. All they had to do was bring them and turn them in. So just in case there's a failure of technology, which we always think might happen, Right, uh, <coughs> like right now. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. <coughs> what your cooperator or your supervisor will do, and Barbara, I think I did. I did. I put your username and password in your folder already. I, I probably didn't. <coughs> One of the tasks that you're going to, to uh, input in the system is simply your summative evaluation. This document right here, that's the first thing you're going to input. And you are going to input, I, I don't think I brought them, so I'll, I'll bring them to you. What you have scored for a final summative under planning, uh, instruction, classroom management, assessment, communication, and also professionalism. You're going to stop right there. The rest of this is my mm -hmm. obligation. Right. So all you're going to do, what I do is fill this out first, put it beside my computer, go to the computer, type it in, and always hit the save button. Don't send anything until everything has been accomplished. Okay? That's the biggie that you're going to input into the system. The other two are two very short assessments. It's a student disposition on, I think it's a, a zero, 1, 2 score. Mm -hmm. You just click in the little circle of 0, 1, or 2. Uh, There'll be, I think after three or four tasks, they'll, it'll tell you to uh, calculate scores. Just hit that button and get to the very end. And it'll say grade. There'll be a box. What you do in that box is just type pass or fail. And then underneath, hit save. I'm going to show you that in a minute. I have mine do those. You can do them ahead of time, but I always want you to turn the hard copies into me the final week that I visit for my records. 
Now, if you'd like to keep a copy of this, some I did, which some of mine always do, just copy it. But I always retain the hard copies for my closet at home. Okay? Now, I gave you a tutorial on the TK-20. That will be helpful. You can, and again, copy any of these materials you like. Uh, your, your, uh, go ahead. If you will see on Internet Explorer, I will bring you an index card with the address. You'll just simply type here, instead of www, you're going to type in mtsu.tk20.com, and that will bring up the TK20 system. Now, what I, take out these WWWs and replace Thanks. it with MTSU. Yeah, that's trial and error. We learned that. I'm going to put up one from last placement that's already done and show you how she did hers. She allowed me to use her password and username. She trusts me. <laughs> All right. This one was from Laverne Middle School this last time. That was her username that the university gave us. And the password. Then we click login. Welcome, Taryn Huddleston. And this is what I do on my first visit. If I can see that your name is there, we celebrate. <laughs> Yay, rah. And then I say, don't worry about it to the last week. You're there. That's all I need to see. Okay? Now, that took how much time away from us during my first visit? 10, 15 seconds. And then you're not to worry about it. Please, trust me. Don't worry about it. You're there. You're in the system. Now let's pretend like it is the last week and you're finished with the student teacher's evaluations and you're ready to go. And you're still not going to worry about it. You're going to simply click field experience and there you go. Her student teacher was Jamie Cathy, wonderful young lady, passed in flying colors, a wonderful example of a teacher. She's got teacher blood. And all you do is click on the blue section. And you can see that all of her instruments have been inputted into the system on the 18th of October. And let's go, let's go to the summative evaluation first. See where she passed her? Her first placement, she had no absences. She was eighth grade language arts. And see, there's one of those real high marks on everything. And then she's already graded her, so we didn't save that one because it's already in. Now, I have not, yes, I have sent that in because she sent in her portfolio information. So I sent back to her and said, you may hit the complete button. And when she hits complete, it's gone, and we can't get back into it and change anything. But see, that's the value. Until you are positively sure that everything is done, save. Because if you hit complete, it's gone. <clears throat> In an act of Congress, we can do it, but it takes some time to get it back. And then if we do, if we hit revoke, then it revokes all your data that you put in there. Not that this is so hard to go hit a button and write comments because you'll have a comment box where you can make comments about strengths and weaknesses. Also, 
but it's just the fact that you're going to have to do it over again. Okay, I'm going to take you back to my screen, which will, I think will show, let's, let's do Barbara since you're mine. I think it will show you underneath me for this second placement. And you'll always have those four digits after your name. And if you're like me, you forget those and it takes you right back. It won't take you any farther. Mm -hmm. Technology, do what it asks you to do or it mm -hmm. slaps you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it does. Now this is my screen. <coughs> Same thing, field experience. assessments and these are student teachers of the past here she is Kristen mm -hmm. yeah, let's find Kristen here. Burford now instead of Mullins. Yes, <clears throat> and we're going to trial and error. Usually the second entry is the second place, but not always. You think you're in a mode here and then it slaps you again. It gives you, uh, keeps you honest. Let's see if this one brings up uh, Barbara's name. <clears throat> no, that was last time. Yeah, so. that's, that's not but you see, yeah, that's not her. she had three assessments. This was her cooperating teacher at uh, Laverne Middle, last placement. Mm -hmm. She has not yet put in her assessments because if she had of what would have shown here? Yeah, the date. The yeah. Okay. And see, that way, when you see that date, and I had a student teacher or a cooperating teacher one time say, well, how do I know that somebody is not messing with my data? I said, very simply, look at your initial date that you put it in, mm -hmm. and if that ever changes, somebody's messed with it. But that's not, that doesn't happen. Right. But that's, that's how it can be foolproof. You know when you put it in, and if you look back there and that date's changed, then you need to question something. Right. But that never happens. Because her first, her last name before was, I think it was very similar to her name now. It was Murford or something like that. Murfin yes. Or Murfin or something. Because she got married. So this was the Why is it that cooperating teacher? No, her first name. Because they just got the teacher. Teacher. And then last, the, the page 20 was not up last hearing, so we're missing all of the yeah, said that all was your There okay. you are, Barbara. Now, let's just take a look, see. This is the brand new placement, so you see I have all of my tasks that I will complete during the end of this placement as well as Barbara. Uh, let's click on Barbara's assessment of student teacher preparation, which she will do before the end. Listed below, this is how you think after she's been with you or he, the university has trained your student teacher in doing their job. Okay. And it goes from one, two, or three. All you have to do well, it usually will have a circle to click inside. Well, if it was your screen, it yeah. would. They would have little radio buttons. Mm -hmm. okay. You could click on it, and then it would automatically. Yeah. 
calculates for you to put okay. one to it. Okay. Okay. We can only see it. Oh, you can just look at it. Okay. But here again, Barbara, when you get to the final portion, mm -hmm. grade, pass or fail, and then save. Okay. Is there also a section on this or any other forms that we might fill out that would our rating of the university's preparation of the teacher? Yes, that like, is it. Right? That's it. Because this I know that we're rating the teacher, but then sometimes a program could have deficiency reports. Right, that and that that's the prepared. assessment right there. Okay. You're rating how the university okay. has prepared that teacher mm -hmm. to come right. into your classroom. Here you go. This is my screen. This is what it'll look like, Barbara. Okay. When you have your password and come into it, the right. circles, all you do is click into one of these areas, and it'll automatically score it here. Okay. Uh, and then we're not going to do it since it's not time to do it. No. But at the end, calculate scores. It will total, and if it's a perfect score, it'll be 54 points. Mm -hmm. And then just save at the bottom. And then when you save it, see what's the value of that is it just redirects you to your next task okay. and then once you do it your little flag goes away uh -huh. okay. Okay. but that's basically it I have four and you have three and then uh, well you were asking about the preparation of the program or the, what we do here that's the first one and then the second one is their disposition yeah let me um, pull it up you're going to have to look at, do they have the temperament? Mm -hmm. And the personality it's going to take to be a, a teacher mm -hmm. in this profession. And we've been looking at these dispositions when they come into the program at, uh, well, most of them come into our program in their junior year or the end of the, their second semester in their sophomore. And every class they go through, each professor, and if they work with a public school person, like doing a tutoring and mm -hmm. observation, that person does a disposition on them, so mm -hmm. we have a file on them. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing things that are deficit in their character or their disposition, we probably got it documented. So if you say, want to say, well, I don't think they're going to make it, we need to pull them or we need to do some remediation in these areas. We've probably gotten a file on them, and maybe the leadership team, because we have one that makes the decision if they're going to go ahead and do teach or if we're going to pull them and say, you just need to graduate non-teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they made the decision, like, let's give them a chance to mm -hmm. see if once they get out there, they can see the value of their behavior and how they're acting. So don't feel like when you get this, I'm the lone wolf here. No. I'm the only no, one no. seeing these because most of the time there's a file and we just, this is the capstone of the file and we said we give you that opportunity and you did not choose to, you know, avail yourself of what we had for you to, you know, succeed. And this is completed at the end of the placement? Yes. Yes. Or we have other things, um, like we have problems and concerns forms that you have that you write and discuss with that student at the beginning of the placement. So we are stepping them through. We need to pull them out. We've got remediation that they can go through and come back and try it again. So, if, um, if you have a situation, like I said before, where it's obvious, well, but this bunch it isn't because they've made it through and, and they're going to be fine but this happened mainly in the first placement mm -hmm. where you see this person is not accepting my suggestions. They're just kind of out there, they're rolling their eyes. They're not on time, yada, yada, yada. We have, you ask your supervisor for forms. Mm -hmm. They have them where you can fill out a problem that this child has, mm -hmm. give that to the supervisor or if the supervisor is not available, call Dr. Brown, send it over, or uh, in my case, I would pick them up and, and, and take them over. Okay. Documentation that we can't let this student teacher go on any farther without doing some remediation or mm -hmm. pull them in, and we've had that. Yeah. We've had, I, in my tenure and four years, I've had two mm -hmm. that I've had to do that with. In fact, one had to go pull out of the program entirely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Last year, I had a student teacher that was in high school they had already done middle school and they were doing high school and it was art K through twelve. And he was having such difficulty with his cooperating teacher at that placement 
but they fooled him and gave him to me because they just knew my temperament and that right. I might be able to sure. kind of coax him along sure. and stuff. And he was very su successful at the elementary sure. level, but the cooperating teacher he had, and then plus the high school situation was just not a good combo. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we're all wired for different things. Exactly. Sometimes it's maybe the age range. And I'm glad you said that. I had one last spring, same thing. And, and he was going to quit because mm -hmm. there was a class between cooperating teacher and a young man. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing, even when I went and I sat down with her, there was, I sensed there's nothing going to work here. It's just one of those situations where we're just going to have to ride it out. Mm -hmm. He's a very competent English person, wonderful ideas. It was just his feedback from her was, you don't want to try that. That won't work. <laughs> and I said, but can he just maybe try, try it? <laughs> and guess what? They loved it. Those yeah. kids loved it. And then what did she do? She got jealous of him because oh, he was no. a young upstart. Oh, no. So nothing, nothing he could do. I did not allow him to quit. Yeah. I said, your second placement is coming up. It's middle school. He found heaven. Today yeah. he is one. He is a, te a real teacher making money, the head of a, the annual staff. Yeah. He emails me often. Thank you mm -hmm. for not allowing me to quit because I think that was her goal. Mm -hmm. Well, that was going to be a question. Um, I've done this for many years, and there was one situation where um, the student teaching was at the same school because we had sixth grade at the time. But uh, it was two different things. Mine was eighth grade math. In the sixth grade situation, they were doing all the subjects. And um, this other teacher wanted to fail you know, and I said, absolutely not. Because I saw, you know, and that happens sometimes. That was my question to you. If you see two extremes, you know, like this teacher failed way low, and then you've got a second cooperating teacher, I assume you get together on that. Yes, because that's what they did absolutely. with me. They came down and I said, oh, please, you know, I see possibilities, and, you know, we worked it out. I said, with what they had done with me mm -hmm. as an eighth grade man. Mm -hmm. Well, and in my role as a supervisor, as a troubleshooter, mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and the teacher in me still, mm -hmm. and my question to this, this cooperating teacher, do we not give these babies who are still babies, mm -hmm. seniors, the same opportunities you're giving That's your right. students right. to help and to men? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and well, I, you guys are so proactive, though, because I've had a student teacher from another university that I wanted to fail, and they would not allow me to fail her, and she went had three different jobs in Florida, getting fired from each one of them, mm -hmm. teaching. Well, and I and I told them I said this, but they didn't want that record, or so I don't know what they didn't want well, their teacher to fail. Well, I'm proud to say that our record here, since I've been doing this, on my recommendation, this particular one case is out mm -hmm. because we did provide the remediation and we did yeah. send them back through, mm -hmm. and they did still. Mm -hmm not meet the expectation right. they're out of the program mm -hmm. you know and, and it's just documentation and being an old former principal i knew how to document right mm -hmm. you know and the student teacher uh well i don't think my rights were i said well let me tell you about your rights from day one i have notes on you from the cooperating teacher my evaluation is the official documentation it's just good to know because mm -hmm. this is my third university that i had to and each one has such a different way about them. And I respect that a lot. I appreciate that. You know, I think that's so much more aligned with my philosophy of how you should sure. handle uh, up sure. teachers. Now, in closing, we're not going over the handbook, but here is what I promised you, a synopsis, <laughs> the old teacher in me again, of the main points of the handbook. So you might just want to stick this in the handbook. Let me have a copy to go through. And of course, number one, we reiterate, get acquainted the first few days. They must teach everything you teach again for it. There's that keyword circle in case you have that come up with them. There's that minimum. Well, I, I have an AP class, and I don't let my student teachers teach the AP class. Is that's that fine. okay? That's fine. Okay. That's fine. We work that out. It's, well, up, it's your AP. call. Yeah, okay. 
but you can find something for her to do. Well, well, a lot, I've had, uh, I, when I had, um, what's her name, the last girl you and I had together. Or Leslie. Teach, is Leslie. Leslie. Gossip. She brought me things at her because right. she had taken it. Yeah, that's what. And she brought me things, and the kids would ask her questions, and mm -hmm. she would make Wonderful. comments. So, but, but was, other student teachers I've had were intimidated. I think by you have them. to use your own judgment about yeah. if you think they can handle and, it or not. Yeah, and yeah. I'll let her participate in it because I think it helps her, but I don't give her that responsibility. Right. Some team that's teaching. Right. That's, that's, that's your call. Yeah. Okay. That's your call. Okay. Uh, now, number two, we didn't dwell on, but le let me just briefly talk about the unit. They've already done a unit. They've written a unit in first placement. Now here's what I suggest to mine. If, if they can talk to you and you have a unit already that you want them to teach instead of developing a new unit, that's fine. If you have even uh, the pretest and the unit test, that's fine. Now what they have to do, they have to come up with two homeworks that they need to show me, good example, poor example of work, a project that goes along with a unit, one good example of student work, one poor example, and then an in-class activity. That's a portfolio requirement, okay? But if you have a unit, Miss Petty, hey, here's a unit I teach during this time. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to it. Mm -hmm. They have to still come up with the objectives, the state standard, and the lesson plan to fit that unit. But I tell mine, since you've done that, the first placement, there's no need, if your cooperating teacher agrees, to reinvent the wheel. Use your time, quality time, on teaching this time. I will leave you, and hopefully your, your supervisor, whoever they may be, will leave you enough materials for three observations. And again, if you need more, feel free to duplicate. Uh, Again, number four, they are to hand you a formal lesson plan each time that you evaluate them formally. And again, talking about never leaving you holding the bag information we talked about prior. And then again, important that they remember that everything, including their responsibility of grading, inputting grades, grading papers, finishing projects, should be uh, completed before they leave you on the Wednesday, but their teaching duties are over on Friday the 7th as they leave. And their last day with you at your schools is Wednesday, December the 12th. Now, finally, this is so important. Number six, if you detect even the slightest problem, that you think will escalate, mm -hmm. call the supervisor first. You don't have to call t Dr. Brown's office because Dr. Brown's just gonna turn around and call me to go take care of it. Mm -hmm. Call the supervisor uh, so we can decide, do we need to take action here? Do we need to bring this person in to the, to the Dean Bonner's office and have a round table discussion about his responsibilities? And number seven, all of our student teachers have been versed on appropriate dress, professional dress, and their behavior. Again, if you see that they're getting too close to the students, if they are trying to dress like the students, here is a cardinal rule with mine. I don't know if you've heard this or not yet, Barbara. The three Bs. No boobs, <laughs> no bellies, and no butts. And I have them repeat after me before you go out in the public schools. I do not want people, when you pick up, not bend over, to pick up a pencil to see what kind of underwear you have on. I don't care if the students do do it. And, and most schools have s strict dress codes against that too. You are what they are looking at. You are their professional. Right now, you're not a college student anymore. You're, you're the example. So they've been versed. And that includes, I had one last time, bra strap at the high school. 
she's over here and that bra strap would come down. I'm thinking. And the coach and I, he would look at me and go, and I'd go, and guess what we did? We had a master female teacher next door, the grandma type, with the glasses. She said, I'll take care of you. You go, girl. And then she came back and said, well, why didn't he say something about it? <laughs> That's. <laughs> Don't touch that with a stick. No. I just had a couple of uh, comments. Um, if you have a student teacher that has missed days, or the school's been out a bunch of days, and you are running behind, I know we've had to go over where they've had to. Finish up that's fine. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. And that, that's perfectly and we fine. Had a, you know, a student teacher said, well, no, this is it. And no, we're like, well, no. but you haven't completed. That's right. That's right. We've had a short, we've had lots of interruptions. Mm -hmm. You've not completed your time. So that's it's right. all right to do that's that. That's your call. And don't yes. And ever worry that they, they heard something exactly. different than what you're reading right. in the books because they've been stepped through it several times and signed off on right. sheets of paper that they understand completely. Right. There may be some adjustments, and right? Absolutely. And I always tell them it's better for them. The more you can do, sure. The Why would you not you're want to right. jump into it? <laughs> and the other one about this professional, and this is a note to supervising teachers also. I think it's very important for the supervising teacher to be professional, and I always do don't allow mine to hang around the teacher lounge, the gossip Good advice. Is, um, Good advice. Very important for them not to hear the negative Good comments and discussions. And I warn mine, you may be in a thing. trap. That's right. You may be trapped. Mm -hmm. You may, and here's my advice to you as pre-professionals. If you happen to go in that lounge and get a Coke, and there's a teacher that says, well, what do you think about Miss Wool? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she'll hear an earful. <laughs> you know what she'll, she, I have advised her to say? I am a fledgling. I am learning. I, I can't comment. I'm, or I'm glad to be here. I right. told her, you know, this right. deal where you said you're a guest mm -hmm. in the school, and to be very careful not to leave the school that you're teaching in and talk negative about it out in the uh, community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Important. Well, Kristen I, brings her own food and drinks and keeps them in my refrigerator so she doesn't have to go there. <laughs> well, I think sometimes, you know, we had a seminar here, what was it, Monday, that scared, I think scared them to death mm -hmm. on games. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And I learned. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this stuff. And I had one call me and say, I don't know if I can do that. I said, honey, you've done it already. Mm -hmm. You've been there. It's a matter of the university is just trying to inform you of things to look for to ward off these problems. That doesn't mean you can't handle it. You have, because I saw a lot of these things in your first placement that you handled perfectly. But you have to react to it. Well, it scared them to see. It was kind of graphic on Monday and, and the real stuff. We had the sheriff department here, right. and, and it was very, very informative. Well, they've been doing um, drills this last week. They did drills at all the schools. Um, so that's, you know, that was a little scary for all the kids. But right. we've been doing them. And, and the thing is, a lot of the kids don't even realize what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. it's a little scary for them to realize right. it, too, because they don't pay attention. No. Well, we certainly are glad that you chose to be with us this morning, even though our small group, we had a small group, the, the bestest was, were, were here. <laughs> and we, we just ask that if you have cohorts that have student teachers that did not make the meeting this morning, uh, all of mine have the folder. Uh, I sent the folder with the student teacher on Wednesday. So Gary and Marsha, Marsha's been through this before, mm -hmm. and Pat have this folder. But if they have any questions, if you'll please be that liaison at Central okay. Middle for me. And I just finished up with, at Riverdale with Coach Byers, and he okay. was wonderful. And uh, I just love going to these places where I see your names on my list because we've done, had a good relationship in the past. But at any time, if you have any questions, Feel free to call me. My numbers are on there. Uh, 
I started out doing elementary, and Dr. Huffman kind of stole me in 2000, in the second semester in 2005, and I've been doing secondary ever since and love it. Uh, make sure that, that they're going to get their million dollars, right, for yeah. being here today. Do they need to sign anything? If you'd like to, to stay for the, the tailgating, you have tickets, right? Yeah. And the ball game? <laughs> Uh, that's just another perk for coming, and we appreciate you coming. And, Thank you. And uh, like I say, Mar or, uh, Barbara, let me give, go ahead and give you your yeah. official documents. Let me have that. They have my um, password for that.